Young's Double Slit Experiment Let's see how particles or little balls of matter act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we'll see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. When the top of one wave reach the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other off. So now, there is interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two top slit are the highest intensity, the bright line. And where they cancel, there is nothing. So when we throw things that are matter through two slits, we get these two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Now, consider quantum. An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny particles through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. But we get an interference pattern. We fired electron, tiny bits of matter through. We get pattern like waves and not like little marbles. How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It wasn't making any sense. The physicist thought maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So they decide to shoot electron through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern just seems to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits and it goes through neither and it goes through just one and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely confused by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one of it went through and let it fly. But the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced the pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. This led to many questions. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what an observer have to do with any of this? It was as if the electron decided to behave differently as the one was aware it was being watched. It seemed that the observer somehow collapsed the wave function simply by observing. However, physicists eventually realized that any type of measuring device, no matter how small, always interacted with the electron, subsequently destroying the interference pattern. Werner Heisenberg proposed the new uncertainty principle describing this. The uncertainty principle can be stated as follows. It is impossible to design an apparatus to determine which slit the electron passes through that will not at the same time disturb the electron enough 
to collapse its wave function, destroying the interference pattern.